Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased technical analysis. Now before we get into analysis, I have to say guys, I was watching the Stranger Things show and I saw the Eddie Munson's uh, scene and he was rocking out to Metallica, Master of Puppets, so I started rocking with him through the whole scene and now Uncle Charles' neck is hurting really bad. I'm not as young as I used to be, I was trying to headbang. My neck hurts really bad, but you know who else was hurting today? The Bears. Ha <laughs> ha. The Bears was hurting, okay, really bad. Uh, you know, we had CPI this, you know, this morning, 8.30 came out. And you see that big old big move to the upside. Okay, so now we know that the market makers did not repeat what they did back in early June. Okay, so it got pushed to the upside. And this is my blue line right here. That was my 418.5 level. Very critical level. Okay, that's based on my 23.6 retracement level uh, from the March 2020 low to the January 2022 high. We broke past that and we ran into the 420 level. Okay, guys, so let's go. We're going to look at the big picture, the daily chart. This is what we always look at. And you can see, guys, we broke out of that chop range. We had a nice chop back in early June. We broke to the downside. To this time, we had a nice chop, but we break in to the upside okay guys and this is a continuation from uh the bottom in june okay because since june mid-june we had some high highs and higher lows and this is just a continuation now i always say the market let's go through two phases it's either gonna chop or it's gonna make a trend move we had two weeks of chop guys now that we finally got the breakout the question is will we get will we finally get that one directional trend move okay because since we got a breakout I'm gonna assume that this one directional move could be to the upside but I'm still gonna play it level to level all right which is what I want to talk to you guys about very important we know the levels and know the setups as of right now spy is around 419.8 which makes the next support which serve as strong support today guys you can see on the 15 minute chart right here, that orange line, that's that 420 level. Okay, so we gotta watch that 420 level tomorrow. If it clears, 421.17 is in play. That's my 50% retracement level. I also have FIB levels from January high down to June low. Okay, so the 50% retracement level of that move is 421.17. If that clears, that's a massive win for the bulls. Okay, I have some levels there around 422.5. 424 to 425 zone it's just based on previous uh demand zones guys like if i scroll to the left i'll look for it oh that's a strong resistance level there and you know i'll look for it there around 425.5 ish okay so where am i above this so okay so 422.9 so if we clear 421 i'm around that to 423 you'll put that in play then 425.5 above that then I have another level at 429.6s. That orange line right here, you can see we got a double top right there back, back on April 28th and May 4th. Okay? Double top there. So that would be a strong resistant level. And of course, you see these purple lines right here. This purple line starts from the January high, connects to the March high. Have not got a third touch of it yet, but we're getting very close to it. So... The touch of that would be around 432, 433-ish, which also happens to be where the 200-day moving average is, okay? Around 432-ish, okay, guys? So that upside those upside targets are only in play if we can clear 421. That's my bullish scenario. Let me talk about the bearish scenario, all right? So now... Like I said, that 418.5 level is now support based on my 23.6 retracement level from March 2020 low to January 2022 high. If that level fails tomorrow, that would give SPY a false breakout setup. Remember guys, this is what my channel is about. I identify setups for us to trade. I don't give predictions, all right? Just setups for us to watch out for so we can trade. It's like playing chess or something okay so 418.5 fails if our opponent the market makers make their move and they take out that 418.5 level our response at least my response would be to look for puts because that is a false breakout setup and that will put 416.5 ish to 417 zone if i check my 15 minute chart here this is the orange line 
416.5 to 417 zone. As you can see, it served as a strong support zone. It has served as a resistance zone before. Okay, if 416.5 fails, we go back down and test 415. Okay, guys, my strategy is simple and straightforward. I long breakouts of resistance and I short failures of support. As of right now, the resistance is 420 and the, the, the support is 418.5. Watch for the breakout or the breakdown. Okay, guys, now let's say SPY opens a little higher. It gaps up above 420. That means 420 is then support and 421 is the next resistance. If it opens and gaps above 421, that means 422, 423-ish is the next resistant, and 421 is in support. Does that make sense? And the same thing. If it gaps down and it opens below 418.5, that means 418.5 is the first resistant. And next support is around 417, 416.5. Does that make sense, guys? All right? So you guys got my levels. You got my setups. Right now, SPY is in breakout mode. From the chop, all right? So if we see a resistance clears, that's your sign to look for calls. If we see a support fails, that's your sign to look for puts. I'm moving on to triple Q, and look at that. I talked about the five-day moving average yesterday, how it's a sign of a rollover, but we got to watch out for, um, you know, for the recapture, okay? Because... In strong uptrends, price spends a lot of time above the five-day moving average. When it starts dropping, first thing that goes, you can see right here back in you know early June, first thing that goes is that five-day moving average. But always got to watch out for the recapture, but it was tricky because Triple Q gapped above it. But as you can see, it back-tested it as a support and held, giving us a hammer candle. And it did close above our support, uh, excuse me, our resistance at 325, which puts 329.7 in play. Okay, so what's that 325 support tomorrow? If it fails, if it's below it, that's bearish. The next support is at 322.4 ish. Look for puts if that support fails, and that will put 320, 318, and 315.5 ish back in play. Okay, but as long as 325 or 322.4 ish lowest holds. That keeps, that keeps more upside in play with 329.7 as the first target, okay? Now, last but not least, I got Tesla, and I talked about how I was bearish on Tesla unless it can recapture some critical resistant levels, starting with that 858 level. Now, look what happened. It gapped up and opened around 891.2-ish. Very tricky, right? However... We got to always remember the back test and go strategy. If you guys don't know about the back test and go strategy, I made a video about it. Links in the description below. Or if you watch this video to the end, the video will pop up, okay? But pretty much, that's what happened. It gapped up, and then it's pretty much, it was red at first, and it dropped all the way down as low as 850. However, I had support around 858, and it recaptured that intraday, giving us a false breakdown setup intraday. And now look where it closed, giving us a, it's a red candle, but it's a hammer candle. And it recaptured 858. It recaptured another level I have at 878. And it's just below the 887 level, okay? So here's the setup. I'm going to go to the four hour chart. Okay. It's not cooperating. All right, here we go. Got the four hour chart here. You can see we got this trend line. So. I need to see 887 clear. Not only does it clear this green trend line on the four hour chart, but it recaptures the 887 level, which is a critical resistant level that I have. So above 887, I would target uh, 895. Let me go back to the daily. Then the 200 day moving average, which is around, I think it's around 910 ish. Okay, so it's at 908.7 ish. Okay, so that's what we got to watch out for tomorrow. Can Tesla recapture 887? I would be bullish if it does. Support is currently at 878. If that fails, look for puts targeting 858. All right, guys. So let me finish this out with some flow sentiment. And here's the uh, SPY filter for 500K premium of, uh, premiums or above. And it's 77% into puts. Okay, a lot of big money. 7.9 million. Big size. A lot of big money bet into the downside right now. Okay, 1 million, 12.5 thousand in size. Okay, these big... All right, could they be hedges? Could they be hedges? Because a lot of time when we see sides this big, they could be hedges. All right, I want to point that out. And if they're hedging with puts, 
most likely they believe they, they, these whales think the market's gonna go up more so just keep that in mind guys all right let me look at triple q triple q huh not much activity for the 500k premiums or above but overall bearish 87 percent in the puts and let's take a look at tesla yeah 92 percent in the call so yeah big money very bullish on the tesla right now all right guys despite the bad news so anyways Thank you guys so much for watching, all right? If you guys need some extra help with the stock market, please consider, you know, tr uh, entering my Discord, especially if you're a day trader. Definitely highly recommend my Discord for day traders. So if you guys like Uncle Charters' style and you like my content, I believe you will love my Discord. Peace.